I'm Scott Milkey. I'm a customer product manager for ZF Group's Commercial Vehicle Control Systems Group. Today, we're gonna to look at some of the recommended maintenance procedures for the Maxxis air disc brake. It's commonly thought that air disc brakes are maintenance free, and that's just not the case. Regular inspections and maintenance are recommended to help your customers maximize the life of their ADVs and rotors. On your screen, you'll see the inspection cycle table, also found in your maintenance manual. You'll notice that the recommended inspection intervals vary between line haul, general service, and severe duty vehicles. Our warranty documentation can be used as a guide to help define severe service versus line haul and general service. First, we'll start with our pre-chip inspection, which can be found in document TP19050. The purpose of this inspection is to assist vehicle operators with identifying any major abnormalities and report that the vehicle needs servicing. Next, we'll move on to our wheels on and off inspections. The rest of these inspections, such as the wheels on and off inspections, will be done by a technician, usually during a periodic maintenance interval, and is recommended to be done every four to six months, depending on the severity of the service of the vehicle is subjected to. A wheels off inspection is recommended to be performed annually for all vehicles in any service category to ensure there are no abnormalities with the system that need to be addressed. Finally, we'll talk about the last portion of the inspection table, which is the inspection that is done during pad removal and replacement. With the pads removed, we'll be able to get a complete view of all of the components that are not normally visible with pads and wheels installed, and do some additional evaluations of our brake caliper's performance. For our pre-trip inspection, we want to check the air system where possible on this vehicle to make sure that our air lines are free of cuts, bulges, abrasions, anything that might affect braking performance. We especially want to listen for heavy leakage and make sure that that's remedied before the vehicle is put into service. We'll check our airlines, make sure that these are in good shape. We also want to make sure that they're free moving and that they allow the caliper to move freely back and forth during operation. We also want to check our parking brake chambers to make sure that the caps are installed and that the PG bolt is present and also installed in the floor. Another part of our pre-trip inspection is the rotor inspection. We're going to check through our wheel holes and see if we can see any major abnormalities here with the rotor. What we're looking for is large cracks through the vent channel or any other type of cracking, but there are permissible cracks. Spider cracking, small cracks, are allowed and wouldn't put this vehicle out of service, but a large crack through to the vent channel would. We're gonna put some pictures of that up on the screen so you can see what a permissible crack and a non-permissible crack is. Also, while pad wear is not directly visible, we can see our air disc break up here and check out what's going on, but we can't see the pad wear. However, rotor wear may actually be an indicator of a extreme pad wear abnormality condition, such as metal on metal. So we'll show a picture of rotor metal on metal condition as well, so you can see what that might look like. And a driver could identify that vehicle needs to be taken in for service. For our wheels on inspection, we have two measurement methods. We have a caliper casting notch, which there's a notch in the caliper piece, and you can clearly see where the material changes. The point on that notch that is the furthest outboard, when that moves inboard as your pads wear, it'll meet up with the face of the caliper pad carrier. That is when your pads are worn to a point where a wheels off inspection should be done. So we'll check that notch right now. And that notch hasn't reached that point yet. There's also a second measurement method, which involves using a ruler. So we'll check that, and this will serve as a guide to figure out if we need to take the wheels off and check these pads. So we'll go back here and check off of the flat surface where the caliper meets the torque plate, and we're measuring to the guide pin cap. The long pin measurement is five and five eighths, and the short pin measurement is four inches. If you exceed those measurements, this vehicle should be checked further and have the wheels pulled off to check what the pad wear is even further. Now that we've taken our wheel off, we can perform what we call a wheels off inspection. We recommend that this be performed every 12 months. Um, it gives us a good overall picture of the brake caliper. We can check the rotor, see the entire face of the rotor, check that for wear, any cracking, abnormalities, um, and permissible cracks or non-permissible cracks, cracks through the vent channel being non-permissible. We can check our rotor thickness as well as well at this time, and also our pad thickness and pad wear. We can also see 
our seals. Make sure there's no cuts or bulges in these seals that would indicate that they need to be replaced. We can also check our leaf springs on the caliper, the down holder bar, make sure those are free from damage as well. And then we can also check our guiding system make sure that our adjuster mechanism is keeping the proper running clearance gap for this caliper. If we want to go one step further, we can even check this running clearance gap and make sure that it's within specification of the manual. For our final inspection, we've come to the pad exchange inspection. This is to be done after we've determined through the prior measurements that these pads need to be exchanged on this vehicle. We've measured it, we understand that the wheel is off, our pads are worn, so we're going to pull the pads out. So we'll start with our simple hand tools. we got a 13 millimeter ratchet. We'll pull our pad retainer bar. Make sure the bolt is wound all the way out. We can grab the bolt, pull on the bar. It's spring loaded, so you want to be careful that that doesn't pop out. We'll slip it off the side. To remove our pads, we'll use an 8mm ratchet on the D adjuster on the back side. Wind back our adjuster and our piston. Now the caliper's loose, and we can remove our pads. Outboard pad slides out straight. Inboard pad has a 2 degree inclination on it. So you have to push this caliper inboard, slide the caliper in, the pad in. Pull it straight out. Now our pads are free. We can check our pads now for any abnormal wear on the brake pads. We can see how they're wearing overall if they weren't completely worn out and we had determined that we need to check this for a different condition. Now we'll check our brake caliper overall. We want to check our seals. So we'll extend our caliper inboard and check the guide seals as well as the piston seal. We'll extend our piston in this worn condition. We'll be able to see the piston seal and check again for bulges, breaks, cuts, anything that would determine that we have to service this caliper. During this time also, we can check the caliper carrier. Make sure that there's not excessive wear where the pads sit in here. We can check the manual to determine what is considered the worn out condition for the brake caliper carrier. We make sure our caliper also slides freely back and forth, inboard and outboard, and returns to a neutral position. And finally, we can check our guide bushings. We can lift up on the caliper and actually pivot and rotate the caliper slightly. And there's detailed instructions on how to perform this in the manual. And there's also a measurement that will be taken with a depth gauge on the outside of this caliper while doing that movement to determine if the guide bushings also need to be replaced. Now that we've done all that, we determined that the caliper is good to return to service. We'll put our pads back in. So remembering that two degree incline, we put our inboard pad in first. Slide in our outboard pad. Take our down holder bar, slide it into the notch up here, and we'll slide, push down, slide inboard. Make sure it's fully seated inboard that the bolt will clear the opening. We'll take a torque wrench, retighten our 13 millimeter bolt to 15 foot pounds. Then we'll take our feeler gauges for the manual's instructions, we'll set our running clearance by placing the feeler gauge at the outboard pad, 0 0.9 millimeters. We'll run our piston up until we hear a cracking noise. We back off about an eighth or a quarter of a turn. Slide our feeler gauge out. Caliper slides freely. Brake pads are free. And that concludes the Maxxis Air Disc Brake Maintenance Procedures Overview video. I hope this gives you a good idea of the recommended maintenance procedures required for air disc brakes and the different measurements that can be taken, the different evaluations that can be done to determine if the vehicle needs to be serviced if it's equipped with air disc brakes. Thanks for watching.